Benvenuti was probably one of the most influential people that I ran across in my young career. I, re I recall one instant, instance in particular. In those days, you know, a lot of the young uh, school kids these days have got access to all of the great charts from all the bands. Bob Florence charts, they got Billy Byers charts, they got Tom Kubas, they got Gordon Goodwin, Sammy Nestico, everything. You know what we had? We had stock arrangements and Art Diedrich arrangements to play. And those little special charts that Dick Benvenuti would write for us occasionally, you know, which was cool because he used to arrange for Frankie Carr back in those days. He was quite a character as well. And he liked the way I played, and I was in those, when I, my first two years in the band, I was pretty much, you know, playing by the book, you know, getting a nice sound. By this time, I had uh, uh, inherited my father's super olds. Any of you guys know about this horn? It's a beautiful little horn. It's a, olds in those days was uh, was uh, based here in uh, Los Angeles. Okay, before they went on to Fullerton, and then before New Orleans bought them, they made a, a horn with a silver ring along the end of the bell here. It was gold brass, and everything else was silver. And the horn played great. And I played it all the way through high school. And uh, I remember having an arrangement of Jeannie with the light brown hair that Art Dietrich wrote for us. And there was a couple of uh, four bar solos that were written for me to play. And the key of A flat, in the middle of the chart, you know. <laughs> sophomore year. And during that summer vacation, a lot of my friends in the band had discovered Stan Kenton. And I started listening to some of those Kenton trombone players that were very manneristic in the style of playing. They were trombone. It wasn't melody as melody. You know. Now the exception to this is Bobby Fitzpatrick, who was always able to, throughout all of this, always managed to convey a melodic approach. But some of the other guys didn't do that. They had a, they would, uh, and I came back after vacation. We had a band rehearsal. And we played this tune. We got ready to play for a dance. And I came in and I went. <laughs> ben Venuti tore through the saxophones, <laughs> knocking stands and music over and grabbed me and shook me. He says, I don't ever want to hear the trombone played like that as long as I live. Now sit down and play the way it's supposed to. I sat down there and I was still shaking when I sat down. I mean, he got his point across to me that, hey, you played great last year. What are you doing like this? You see what, you see what I was doing? I was making a caricature out of the music rather than playing the music. Now, what's the most important thing of all of this stuff? The music. The music is the number one most important feature that we're talking about here. Not the trombone. The trombone is BS. That's just another means, you know, of, of, uh, of expressing, you know, it's just, a, it's just like a megaphone. It's just carrying on the sound and pushing it out here. It's the medium which I or you or whoever chooses to play the music. And what's most important? The music. First and foremost. 